In Fusion 360, there are two main ways of transferring or reusing designs across different files. Here is a quick tutorial on how to use them and the major differences between them. Let's take a look at the first method. I have prepared beforehand two parts, a cylinder and a cube. These are in two separate files as you can see in the data panel and I have opened them in separate windows here. Suppose that I want to insert the cube into the cylinder in order to create a new part by merging them together. Now the cylinder file is active, go to the data panel and look for the cube. Right click and insert into current design. Move the cube as you wish and click OK. You can see that the cube has been inserted as a new component. There is a chain icon here to tell you that this is being referenced to an existing design. From here, I can go to Modify, Combine, click on the two components and join them together into a new component. Now, what if I need to add fillets at all four corners of the cube? Let's roll back the timeline to before the combining took place. To add the fillets onto the cube, we need to first activate the cube. Notice that when we hover over the cube, there is no option for us to activate the component. If we try to start the fillet tool anyway, we are not able to pick any surfaces or edges of the cube. If we create a sketch on the surface of the cube and try to do a cut, we get an error message saying that no target body is available. To summarize, using this method of insertion, you will not be able to edit the cube in the destination file. The only way to edit the cube is to open the original file. Let's open a cube and add in a fillet. At this point, you need to save for the changes in the destination file to take effect. Go to the destination file and you will see exclamation points telling you that changes have been made to the cube. Click on the icon at the top to update. If you want to break the reference to the original cube, you can right click on the cube and choose Break Link. Let's take a look at the second method of inserting an existing design. Again, we will start with the cylinder. As in the previous example, we want to insert the cube. Go to Insert, Insert Derive and select the cube. At this point, you will be brought to the cube and be asked to select what to insert. We shall click on the cube and select the body. Looking at the browser, you will see that the cube has been inserted as a body at the top level. This is in contrast to the previous method where the cube was inserted as a component. And there is an arrow icon here to show that this is in reference to an existing design instead of a chain. With this method, you can actually edit the cube in this file. Let's go ahead and add in a fillet. The changes you make here will not flow upstream and change the original cube. If we open the original cube and add a chamfer here and save, this is going to flow downstream and get updated in the destination file. Going to the destination file, you will see exclamation marks as with the previous method. Click on the exclamation mark to update.
An advantage of this method of transfer is that you can actually select sketches instead of bodies. Going back to the point of insertion, you can actually go to the browser and select specific sketches to be transferred. Once the sketch is transferred, you can use this sketch to perform operations on the destination file, like an extruder cut for example. To summarize, the first method where you right-click and insert into design, the existing file gets inserted as a component. You would not be able to edit this component in the destination file. For the second method, where you go to insert, derive, the file gets inserted at the top level. You would be able to make edits at the destination file. You also have the option of transferring only sketches or specific bodies in the case of a multi-body component.